Hi, I'm Jason Mears and I'm going to do a very quick run through of um, the differences between servers, virtual machines and containers. So this is a whiteboard that I quite often do with um, customers or colleagues uh, and it details at the bottom everything we need to deliver a service or an application to an end user. So we start at the bottom with things like physical location, physical security, power, cooling and then the hardware which we can normally break up into things like compute, storage and network. The hypervisor above that, the thing that turns the virtual uh, sorry, the physical compute storage and network into virtual compute, virtual storage and virtual network. The operating system, we tend to run on top of that. Any operating system dependencies for any services and applications and then the delivery of the application uh, to the or the service to the end user um, themselves. So I tend to draw this out on a whiteboard and then ask the customer and say of all the things that the IT department has to do, which of those, which of these things actually deliver value to the business? Which of these things give the business a competitive advantage, or actually kind of make the the, the business viable and competitive? And most people will say that it comes down to these here. It comes down to delivering applications and services to end users and the rest is simply a necessary evil or a means to an end that the only thing that actually delivers value is applications and services to end users but kind of ironically the IT department spends most of its time working on things at the bottom of that stack things that don't deliver value to the business so the challenge has been how do we try and minimize the amount of work we do at the bottom of the stack so we can spend more time at the top of the stack and um, if you're somebody who's worked in IT for a long while and you have lots of skills in all of those things at the bottom and in the middle it can be quite daunting to think that some of those skills are kind of going away or less important that IT organizations and companies are now looking to make the bottom of that stack as simple as possible and as automatic as possible um, even have customers just saying I don't really want to do patches and updates anymore I just want to press a button and everything happen so you know I, I want some kind of update manager or rolling patching process so what you'll see is because people are generally lighter on budget and lighter on staff now the stuff at the bottom just needs to go away or be simplified so when you speak to people about okay so what is the bare minimum that we could deliver to a user um, or the bare minimum that we could do to deliver value it tends to be if I could just spend my time focusing on applications and services and the dependencies in those applications and services I would get better use of my time and more, uh, you know, provide more help or productivity to the end user and the business. So, if we take a step back and see kind of kind of where we were and how we used to do things, if I take this example where I have three applications I need to deliver to the business, in days gone by, I would have bought three separate pieces of hardware, the three boxes at the bottom. I would have put on top of that three operating systems and then I would have put the three applications on top so I need three servers or three physical pieces of hardware with three operating systems and three applications to deliver three applications to the business and what I'm really working with there is a server so I class a server as hardware operating system and application so that's how we used to manage um, IT what we then decided to do was to try and squeeze as much as we could out the hardware and have less hardware running more operating systems and applications. So if you take something like a hypervisor, a hypervisor allows you to run more operating systems and applications on a single box or a single piece of tin. And what we start to manage now are virtual machines. And a virtual machine is a software construct where we have the operating system and the application in a nice little package, but multiple virtual machines can run on a single piece of hardware. So our efficiency there is that we've removed um, hardware from the bottom. We're getting more out of a smaller amount of hardware. So that's kind of currently where most people are now, but there's an even bigger squeeze to try and make that even smaller. And what people want to do now is do things cloud native and, and containers. Cloud native and containers are separate things, but you'll generally see them used together. When people are going cloud native, they generally use a container. When people use a container, it's generally because they want to do things in a cloud native manner, but they are they are separate but related. And what we'll see with cloud native is 
we now want to just manage the application or the BER minimum application. So up in the top left hand corner we have the application, any services and dependencies. That is the BER minimum that we want to stick in a container. And you can see that when we move from VMs to containers, we've minimized the amount of hardware at the bottom, but now we've squashed down the operating system. We can run multiple containers on a single operating system. So again, less to manage less hardware resources and a much simpler smaller thing to manage so that thing in the red box is a container so from from left to right when we're on physical we're dealing with servers when we're on virtual we're dealing with VMs and when we're doing cloud native we tend to be working with containers so that amount of code that we need to manage means we're focused on much more at the top of that stack on the left hand side than the hardware or the physical stuff towards the bottom of the stack so if you can take those applications, services and dependencies and squash them into a container, what that means is you can stack multiple containers on a single piece of hardware with a single operating system. So just in very simple terms, it is an oversimplification, but if you hear the term servers, virtual machines and containers and you wonder kind of how, how they correlate or fit together or why why you hear about one more than the other, this is a very simple and oversimplified version of everything involved in the IT department, the whole stack on the left hand side, and then how we've moved from servers to VMs to containers, and why a container is a much smaller, easier manage um, thing to manage, and why you can stack more of them up with less resources dedicated to, to the hardware itself or the operating system itself. So across the bottom physical servers, when we talk about virtual or VMs, you tend to talk about things like VMware vSphere or ESXi. When we talk about cloud native and containers, you tend to be talking about things like Docker. And up at the top of the screen where we've got them all stacked on top of each other, when you want to manage multiple sets of containers and you want to orchestrate containers across multiple pieces of hardware or operating systems, most people tend to use something called Kubernetes to manage that. So this is where servers, VMs, Docker and Kubernetes come in to, to provide a, a bigger picture of the overall state. And I would say that most people have less and less physical servers than they used to before. Most people now have a high majority of VMs, but going forward, you'll see people start to have less VMs and more containers. And going even further forward, you'll see more people managing those containers with something called Kubernetes. So again, that was the oversimplified version of servers, VMs, containers, and Kubernetes. Thank you.